Hey everyone, how's it going? So today I'm making a video all about the IBMS accreditation in biomedical science. And to be honest with you, this has been a long overdue video because I feel like since I've started making videos all about biomedical sciences, like four years ago, I've been getting the same question over and over again, all about what is the IBMS accreditation, do you need it, is it important? And finally, I thought I'll make a video to try and address a bunch of those questions. So I thought that we could start off by talking a little bit about the IBMS, what it is, what the accreditation is, and then I thought we can talk a little bit about which universities have accredited courses, and then we can finish off by talking a little bit about whether it's actually important and whether you need accreditation for what what you hope to go and do in the future. So what exactly is the IBMS? So IBMS stands for Institute of Biomedical Science and essentially what the IBMS is is a professional body that provides support, education and training to biomedical scientists and other staff working within their institute. Now this is where I feel like I have to make a really important distinction that will make the whole concept of the IBMS accreditation clearer for a lot of you, especially if you're watching this as a prospecting student. So as a student you may come across courses that are called biomedical sciences or biomedical science. And essentially this is a course in which you will be taught all about human biology, diseases, pathology and other certain modules I suppose such as disease management or therapeutics. Now biomedical sciences is the title of a course. However, the official term biomedical scientist applies to an individual who works as a scientist within the NHS, in hospitals, carrying out diagnostic processes. So when the IBMS, which is this professional body, talks about biomedical scientists, it's not talking about anybody and everybody who has a biomedical science degree. It's specifically talking about the job role of a biomedical scientist, who, as I said, is the individual who carries out a number of testing within a hospital setting. And I will share more information with you in a moment. So let me just read you a little paragraph from the IBMS. BMS website. Biomedical scientists and laboratory staff analyze fluids and tissue samples from patients, identifying diseases and providing reports that highlight the effectiveness of potential treatments. In the UK alone, healthcare laboratories are involved in over 70% of diagnoses in the NHS and handle hundreds of millions of patient samples every year. To protect public safety, anybody practicing as a biomedical scientist must be registered with the Health and Care Professionals Council, also known as the HCPC, and continue to meet their standards. So essentially what they're saying here is that the job of a biomedical scientist is to help with diagnosis within hospitals and because this is a job where you will be coming across maybe patients or maybe patient samples then it's really important for you to be accredited so that the public is protected. As I said because as this job role as a biomedical scientist you will be working in an environment where patients are involved and this is why they mentioned the HCPC. I'll talk a little bit about the HCPC in a minute, but basically where the IBMS accreditation comes is actually in relation to the H HCPC itself. To give you a brief overview, HCPC or the Health and Care Professional Council, to quote, is a statutory regulator of over 280,000 professionals from 15 health and the care professions in the UK. The council reports its main purpose is to protect the public. So essentially the HCPC again is an organisation that governs a lot of healthcare professions across the UK and its main role is to protect the public. And basically the way they do this is to ensure that anybody who's working as part of the NHS or as part of these healthcare professions is up to date and carries out their role in a safe and standardised manner. That is what they are there to essentially ensure. Now this is what it says on the IBMS website. Basically there's a section and by the way everything that I screenshot and show you right now I will link below so you can have a go so you can go and have a read for yourself. But basically this is a little section that says becoming registered as a, bi as a biomedical scientist. So the title biomedical scientist is legally protected. To protect public safety anybody using the title must meet health and care profession council standards of proficiency and HCPC registered. So that's essentially what I've been describing. So meeting the HCPC standards of proficiency. Basically, you have to complete an IBMS Certificate of Competence and this will enable you to apply for HCPC registration as a biomedical scientist. And basically, the IBMS 
certificate of competence is what demonstrates that you have met the HCPC standards of proficiency for biomedical scientists through a combination of academic qualifications as well as clinical laboratory training. So basically, the reason why certain biomedical science courses are accredited by the IBMS means that that course has been designed in a way that you meet all of the criteria that you need in order to register with the HCPC. So just to reiterate that, I'm going to show you another excerpt that I found from the IBMS website. So the IBMS accredits degree programs and awards the certificate of competence to support HCPC registration. And just to quickly read out for you, so the IBMS degree accreditation ensures that a degree course covers the academic components of the standards of proficiency at the required level to meet the HCPC standards of proficiency for biomedical scientists. So this is essentially what I was describing a second ago. So to summarize, basically, if you would like to specifically become a biomedical scientist and carry out the job role of doing these diagnostic testing within an NHS hospital setting, then it would be helpful for you to obtain your biomedical science degree from an institute that is accredited. Because in order for you to work within the NHS, you do need to be HCPC registered and doing an accredited course will essentially make that easier for you. Now this raises two more questions. The first is, can you still become HCPC registered without having done a biomedical science course that was accredited? And the second question is, should you still do an accredited course even if you don't plan to become a biomedical scientist and work within the NHS. So let's start with the first question. Can you still become HCPC registered if you study a course that is not accredited by the IBMS? The short answer is yes. You can still become HCPC registered if you have not done an accredited course. It just means that you may have to carry out a couple of extra steps in order for you to get there. Now, there is a specific document that explains to you the steps of how you can become HCPC registered without accreditation, and I'm going to link that below. But for the purpose of this video, let me again just read out a little section for you and I'll put it on the screen now. So it says that graduates who have completed a degree not accredited by the IBMS can submit their qualification to the IBMS for assessment. And essentially what that means is that if you have just done a biomedical course, you can send all of the details of your course to the IBMS and they can have a look and go, okay, so based on this person's degree and based on the modules they've learned, do we think that they can be accredited and do we think that they can essentially become HCPC registered? Or, as it carries on to say, graduates with non-accredited degrees are required to I obtain a place in IBMS approved training labs and complete the registration training portfolio in order to be recommended for the award of certificate of competence. This may take place simultaneously with any supplementary education requirements identified in the assessment outcome letter and is the same process as outlined for above for routes to. Again, I think I will link the document below so once you go and read it I think that will make a little bit more sense to you. But essentially what it's saying is that Let's say you have done a biomedical science degree that is not accredited and you have um, sent it for assessment by the IBMS and the IBMS has said, actually, we don't approve of this. If you still want to become accredited, you essentially have to do a bit of like a top up course, if you like, in order to get that accreditation. And this is what they've said. They've said that this top up course can be typically around 12 months, but can be shorter depending on what your biomedical science course was like. But just to emphasize, all of the detail will be linked in the document, so if you have any further questions, please go and read that and hopefully that will make it a bit more clear for you. Now, the next question is, should you still do an NHS accredited course even if you don't plan to go and work in the NHS? The reason why I've included this question in this video is because I have certain students who say things like, oh, well, you know, I'll go and do an accredited course because it's just an extra thing that I will have that will keep my options open. Maybe it will give me an extra advantage that should I decide in the future that I want to go and work as a biomedical scientist, then I have this option. So again, to ask the question, is it necessary for you to go and do an accredited course even if you don't want to work in the NHS as a biomedical scientist? The answer I would give personally is no, 
unless you happen to want to go and study that course anyway regardless of the accreditation. The reason why I say this is because you may like the sound of another course better, but you may think, oh, well, maybe I should go for the accredited one, even though this other non-accredited course actually sounds better to me. This is important because if you actually have a look at the list of institutes that offer accreditation, you will soon realise that a lot of the Russell Group universities and that a lot of the higher ranking universities are not on that list. So a lot of the higher ranking universities do not offer accreditation and instead their main focus tends to be on research and more up-to-date biomedical science information, or I should say content as part of their course. Presumably, as I said, because these high-ranking universities tend to push, push students more towards newer, like more newer cutting-edge research and cutting-edge um, fields, whereas the accredited courses tend to focus on creating this portfolio so that you can gain your competencies and become HCPC registered. Now, I will link again in the description below a document that gives you the full list of all of the institutes that are accredited. But again, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to read you out a list of a handful of universities that offer a biomedical science course with accreditation. So, these are Aston University, University of Bradford, University of Brighton, Cardiff Metropolitan, Leeds Beckett, London Metropolitan, Manchester Metropolitan, Nottingham Trent University, and the University of Wolverhampton. And now finally to finish off, I want to answer the question which I'm sure I'm going to get asked, and that is, if I study a biomedical science course that is not accredited, what kind of jobs can I go and do with it? Now, I've made an entire video all about the jobs that you can get with biomedical sciences, and this was a video that I filmed a couple of years ago, so perhaps I will have to make an updated version. But to give you a couple of suggestions of the kind of jobs and the kind of things that you can go on to do with a biomedical science degree that is not accredited, um, a couple of things can be you can go on to do research, you can go on to pursue further education such as a PhD or a master's, you can go and work in science communication, you can work in pharmaceuticals, you can work in private companies, you can work in perhaps the more business side of biomedical sciences such as like sales or marketing of again drugs and pharmaceuticals. You can work in drug discovery, you can work in clinical trials, there's a whole host of things that you can just sink your teeth into. So don't feel that you're going to be missing out by not doing, a, doing an accredited course because there's still going to be plenty of jobs and plenty of opportunities that you can go on to do with a non-accredited course, especially if you're somebody who has an interest in research. So I sincerely hope that this video has answered your question and has been useful to you. If it has, then please leave a comment below and if you would like to support this channel, I will leave my art shop below. As always, if you have any further questions or just want to say hi, feel free to message me on Instagram or in the comments. And until next time, I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you later.